Hello. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick um, trip around the block on um, the laser collimator, which I've showed you guys. Um, it's a fairly simple um, device. It's really just um, a lump of aluminium, um, aluminium bar, round bar, um, which. Um, hang on a minute. <clears throat> I know you're all going to want to know what size it is, so let's have a look. I suppose you want it in old money. There we go, inches. So that's sort of inch and a half um, Ali bar, um, which has had has been bored right through uh, the sort of size that you need for I mean this particular laser which you can see in the end there um, is um, I've made a, a barrel which is big enough to take that so it's basically a half inch hole in there and um, it's held inside six plastic or nylon screws so these um, three of them are being chopped off and are threaded through as um, sort of set screws um, or grub screws, um, and which are holding the front of the of the unit. I'm going to do a little drawing for you in a moment, and then the three rear ones, which are the ones you use to collimate the collimator, which is something you have to do. Um, I, I left those with with um, slots in them so that I can get a screwdriver in, or you can just turn them with your finger. Um, the back part, this this end piece, this is just an end piece which is knurled and um, and it and it's threaded. Um, and that that um, is just a cap which holds the battery in. So this back bit um, is machined to about just over an inch, 1.1 inches, um, which is just a nice snug fit for a PP3 battery. If I plug that out, you'll be able to see the battery. If I pull it out there, so just a, a sort of nice fit for the battery. And then the um, there's a hole milled in the side for the switch, which turns the thing on and off. Um, and then that cap just screws on like, like so and just keeps the the battery in place and so the whole thing's quite snug in there. Um, that's basically it. Now the hologram is mounted in a little cell which um, is basically just a, um, a bit of bar turned down as you can see. Um, the actual hologram is stuck onto the back. There's a um, I took it out. It, it came in a horrible, cheap, nasty plastic Chinese thing, and uh, I popped it out and I and I just glued it into the back of that cell, and that just is a, a sort of snug fit into there. So you can have it with the with the hologram, or you can have it without the hologram. Your choice. This here was turned down to inch and a quarter, so that's just ten ten thou under inch and a quarter because that's a standard eyepiece diameter for astronomical telescopes so you can put that in the eyepiece of the telescope and shoot the laser up the telescope um, and allow it to um, show you the alignment of the scope and you can do it with or without the with the with or without the hologram depending on what you're doing for my uh, Ritchie Cretien telescope which is the one that um, I've shown you pictures of um, the holographic element is essential because it, it the way that the telescope works but it allows you to get the axial centers close um, relatively close and then from there you have to do other techniques to get the absolute uh, the last uh, the last um, sort of uh, piece of precision out of it so you can only get it so far with the laser the laser is just a guide but for aligning things like like Adam's um, um, te um, what would you call it um, uh, rear rear steady which is uh, to the back of the headstock of the lathe and out on a out on a long bar this would be really good you could just chuck this into the into a, a three jaw chuck or or stick it in a four jaw chuck and uh, true it up and it would shoot up the spindle and you would cast a, a circular um, concentric some concentric circles onto the rest and you could then get the the arms absolutely perfect you could uh, you could even mount this in the rest itself and get the actual um, alignment, this alignment of of that rest perfect um, by making sure the dot hit the end of the 
um, center, which was in the tail stock, um, or you could make a little, a little concentric, uh, print it out on a, on a, on a, on a printer, a concentric set of like a target with circles on it, uh, mount that to the tail stock, and then you could use that to get the parallelism of the um, the rest, the fixed eddy, which is on the uh, rear rear rest, if you like. Um, let's have a. I'll just. Um, um, do a quick drawing of how this looks inside, just for if it's not terribly clear. So if I just, uh, I'm just going to tilt the camera. Um, well, in fact, I'll pull the camera around this way and uh, hold it here. Let me get a pen. Uh, always good to have a pen when you're doing a drawing. So the um, it's basically a. You've got. Um, Inside it looks like this, so, like so. this is uh, threaded internally, there's a, a threaded cap like, like so, which is, is got knurling on it, which is the back cap. Uh, this then um, is sort of, oops, sort of like that. It's, on mine it's sort of wasted down to inch and a quarter, which is the as I say, is a standard for, for telescopes. And then the actual laser element is in this section here. And it's held by three um, grub screws or set screws, which are at the back, and then another three at the front, which which have the actual screws, nylon. The, all of these are nylon, these screws, um, which has the ability to, for you to... So using the rear ones, um, you can centre the laser beam, the laser beam coming out of here like that, you can centre that in this in this position here um, so that the dot comes out of the middle of here which is obviously quite important and then using these screws here we can uh, move the laser up down left right to get it coming through the axis of this unit here and it's very easy to do you just put that into, um, uh, in my case I just use an eyepiece in the, in the, um, stuck in the vise um, you can make a collar that did something similar and then you uh, point it at something which is distant as far away as you can the other side of the shop or I actually went um, over the road um, across the road to my neighbours which is about uh, probably 50-60 yards and I stuck a piece of paper on their, on their garage door across the street and using my binoculars I basically adjusted this rotating it um, um, to see the deviation and with my binoculars I could see the deviation of the dot I mean the dot um, at sort of 60 yards um, you can get it to, you can get it within a circle of about that sort of size at 60 yards I mean it's limited by um, the binoculars I was using I should have used a telescope I suppose and might have been able to see it clearly but you could see the dot moving over it's a slight amount um, and I put graduation lines on there I had a sort of target like that with with graduations which I printed out um, on a piece of paper uh, with the graduations in white so I could see where the dot was moving and I basically just collimated that rotating it the whole time so that the dot was absolutely perfectly still and at that point I knew that this is absolutely perfectly centered um, in every way um, so the battery uh, the switch goes into the side of the unit um, so it's just milled out like like that for the for the switch to go in there that's just a slide switch or you could put a toggle switch or anything and then the battery um, the PP3 battery goes in there with a battery clip and the wiring is pretty simple it's just a uh, you interrupt the um, one of the uh, battery terminals um, through the switch and um, those are just two wires on there <coughs> they're not they are generally um, got limiter resistors in these things uh, just be a bit careful if you buy one that hasn't so you might have to put a series resistor in there as well but um, that's basically um, all there is to it um, and this was just made out of some bits of alley that were in the scrap bin that's why um, if you look at it closely on the on the outside um, you can see that um, it's got some turning marks uh, some, oops, get it in the frame get some, it's got some turning marks and stuff on it those were already there to be honest um, because as I say it came out of the scrap bin but um, that's um, basically basically it. So there's the laser. You can see the laser in there. Uh, that's the hologram that pops in. Um, there, there are the 
the set screw holes which are there. There are actually another set of holes there which are uh, bigger uh, because um, I drilled them for uh, I think an M5 nylon screw and found that I only had M4 nylon screw so I did it again. Um, so um, if I ever needed to go up a size <laughs> I could um, and then the switch on there. Uh, the switch is actually a bit dodgy, it doesn't work very well so it's uh, as you can see the laser the laser's uh, a bit intermittent but uh, it's because it's a salvage switch out of something and I think it's a bit bashed up but um, anyway so that's the uh, laser collimator um, I'll leave that on the screen <coughs> for what it's worth the diagram so you can see what it looks like internally um, now you can buy these commercially <coughs> excuse me you can buy these commercially but um, they're pretty expensive and if you look at those, for instance, those Howie Glatter ones, which I put a link to on the uh, <clears throat> on the group, there are a couple hundred bucks for, for for his fancy one that does holograms and stuff like that, like I've got here. So it's well worth um, uh, making one, and they've got oh, they're coming useful all the time, quite surprisingly, especially when you're making optical instruments. Uh, they're very very handy indeed. Um, just to uh, add to uh, uh, what I've just done, here are some. Um, examples. These are laser modules that I bought um, off eBay. These are Chinese ones, but they're actually reasonable quality. And I think I bought ten for about four or five pounds or something, ever so cheap. Now, <clears throat> the downside of this one here, compared to the one that I've got in my in my unit here, is that this one is actually quite short. So what I'd be inclined to do is make a longer tube for that and insert it inside a longer tube, and then use that, that would give you more adjustment um, for the collimation screws. Um, this here is a crosshair laser, let me get it out of the bag. Um, I'm in the process of making another type of collimator for um, catadioptric uh, telescopes, things like Schmidt Cassegrains and Richie Cretiens, which um, uses a, a, a multi multiple lasers, which um, uh, I won't go into right now, but it, one of the lasers needs to have a crosshair. So this is um, a laser which has got a, a diffraction grating in the front of it, and I don't know if you can see that there, but there's there's a strange grating there. You can see it there. There's um there's a a, a sort of engraved <coughs> element on the front which creates a diffraction um, of the laser, and it gives you a crosshair. But that's a, a bigger bodied one. And would make uh, it be easier to make into a collimatable um, holder, but um, and I think those were uh, they're a little bit more expensive. I think they were about five, six pounds each. But um, it's also a pretty powerful laser. Um, it may be a bit too powerful, but um, um, we'll have to see. Um, these are surprisingly bright, these little ones, uh, but they're so cheap. And you could really, when you think about it, there's all sorts of things that you can use lasers for in enge in engineering. Um, uh, uh, and and setting up uh, machines and setting up uh, iron work and things when you if you fabbing up stuff um, could be could could have all sorts of uses especially used in conjunction with uh, magnets and um, such like um, you can do a lot of quite good measuring but anyway there you go there's some lasers. <coughs>